Hi, thanks for joining this continuing series on topics of OAuth 2.0 and OpenID Connect using the Layer 7 OAuth Toolkit. This video will focus on OpenID Connect, which provides an additional authentication layer on top of the OAuth 2.0 framework that we have seen in other videos. OpenID specifications are developed and maintained by the OpenID Foundation. And today we will look at how the Layer 7 OAuth Toolkit can serve as an OpenID Connect provider. Some other OpenID Connect providers are shown here. For a full list of certifications, visit openid.net, where you can see the list of conformance profiles and certified providers. To review OpenID Connect is really a view, a review of the OAuth 2.0 authorization code grant type that we have covered in the previous videos. In addition to the authorization code grant type, OpenID Connect requires that the client scope of OpenID be provided during the handshake. We can see that during the authorization code request step in the sequence diagram here. The authorization and token server will then validate the authorization code and in addition to the access token and refresh token, generate a JWT ID token to be returned to the client, which can then be used on subsequent calls to the user info endpoint to return claims approved for the particular end user. A list of OpenID Connect benefits begins by building on the foundation of the OAuth 2.0 framework. Add in the ability to generate an ID token representing the end user that can be signed and or encrypted using the JSON object signing and encryption framework. The encryption can be configured using symmetric or asymmetric cryptography. OpenID Connect Core provides a set of standard claims. These claims can be requested by the client application to obtain information about the end user and the authentication event. To start, open up your sample test client we've used in previous sessions, and you'll notice the authorization code and SAML bearer grant types in the tabs next to the Open ID Connect profiles, basic client profile and implicit client profile. In this example, the client is going to request an access token, a refresh token, and an identity token validating the end user by passing in an additional scope of OpenID. In this testing sample client, we are exposing values, but only to show and educate what is involved in the OpenID Connect client handshake and token negotiation. In the table shown here, we have parameters, their values, and then whether or not they're required should be hidden and some additional comments. These values refer to objects that would not be exposed to a user agent in a live production environment, but are provided here for clarity and understanding during the development of your APIs. Here we see request parameters that will be included when we send the request to authorize endpoint, including the client ID. By clicking the send button, we initialize the request to the authorization server of our OTK at v2 authorize. The OAuth 2.0 authorization server is presented that looks familiar because we use the same process during the authorization code login. Here we see we are approving email, address, and phone in our OpenID Connect. Here we can see the authorization code, redirect URI, which has been configured, and some additional parameters that should and must remain hidden. The authorization code has then been posted to the token endpoint with the client ID in exchange for an access token, a refresh token, 
and the newly issued JSON Web Token ID token, JWT Bear, representing the validation of our end user. The test client provides a translation of the ID token here, which again is only visible for testing purposes only. For understanding, we can see the contents within the ID token payload, which includes the subject, the audience, server expiration, issuance time, and other validation parameters. Now, we can use the access token at the protected API, as we did the authorization code grant type, to view information like client ID and end user ID and other information by clicking the resources button. Or we could submit it to the newly deployed user info endpoint as part of the Open ID Connect specification to retrieve individual claims, including email, phone number, and profile. The test client also provides the opportunity to initiate a refresh, issuing a new access token, which can be used against the protected API. Using the OAuth manager, like in previous videos, we now have the flexibility and control to view the authorized OAuth token from the OpenID Connect Basic Client Profile Client. And if we so choose to revoke it, we can now return to our client and we see an error has occurred. Great. Now that we have a working OpenID Connect provider, let's next take a look at how we can implement or customize the private signing key for the JSON Web Token signature of the newly issued ID token.